Hello again. This is Math 2233 coming to you from the College of DuPage. And the title of this lecture is Triple Integrals, Part 1. Please be an active learner as you watch this video. Now we're going to begin our discussion of these triple integrals by really talking about uh, integrating over not a region in two-dimensional space, but a, um, a solid in three-dimensional space. And we're going to start talking about boxes. And of course, we're going to slice these boxes into these little um, uh, squares, or actually we could consider them three-dimensional um, rectangles. Actually, the technical word for those is these are parallel pipettes. Okay, so we're going to start talking about boxes, and a box is going to be the set of all x, y, and z, uh, where x is between a and b, y is between c and d, and z is between r and s, where all those uh, consonants other than x, y, and z are constants. And so um, then we get all of these different boxes, and so we're taking the cross product of uh, those, getting a box that looks like this. And again, this is a parallel piped. And so that's the little piece that we're going to, um, to get. And so then we will take a function that's a function of all three variables. So um, that is uh, going to be this f of x, y, and z. And you could think about this as being w equals f of x, y, and z. And we're going to take the, uh, we're going to evaluate it at fixed points uh, within this interval, but then we're going to say it has to be independent of the points that we pick. We're going to take the limits uh, as this goes to infinity, and um, and, and this uh, delta v is going to be the volume which is uh, of each of these little boxes, which is delta x, delta y, delta z. This is very much logically um, the process that we did before. And so this integral over a region um, B exists if this limit uh, exists and it's equal to that number. Now, although such a geometry uh, does not fit well with much of our experience, because uh, we can't think in four dimensions very well, you could think of this as the changing temperatures in a box and uh, the box, uh, the temperatures could change as a result of where you are in the box based on three variables, three spatial variables, and then it could change over time in one temporal one. Now, non-physical applications can also be considered about business where you can have many, many, many variables that you're, uh, that you're studying. But that's the concept, at least the concept when we're talking about a uh, box-like region like this that has this form. And so the uh, practical uh, method for evaluating triple integrals of this form is to express them as iterated integrals. And so here's a box, and this is A, B, C, D, R, S, as we said before. So then this triple integral over the box B of F of X, Y, Z, DV is equal to uh, this. This is going to be an iterated integral. Now what this means is you're going to integrate first with respect to X, then with respect to Y, and then with respect to Z. But Fubini's theorem tells us that if you have this situation, any order of integration will lead to the same answer. So sometimes you are compelled to change the order. Sometimes it's convenient to do so. And sometimes it's totally arbitrary. But Fubini's theorem is true for triple integrals and, in fact, in dimensional integrals as well. So let's dive right in. Uh, evaluate the triple integral over a box. Here's a box. Now notice that we, so you can get a number, we, um, x is between 0 and 1, y is between minus 1 and 2, and z is between 0 and 3. So you're integrating over that box x, y, z squared dv. And uh, you know what to do. Let's see how you did. You could have used any of the six possible orders of integration, but we're going to integrate first with respect to x, then with respect to y, and then z. Okay, so you see the order of integration then is dx, dy, dz. 
So uh, we're integrating with respect to uh, x first. And so we uh, integrate this. We get x squared y z squared. And we're evaluate that at the limits of 0 and 1. And next we're going to integrate that with respect to y. But first, let's calculate this. So if you do that calculation, you get this as the simplification. Now we're going to integrate with respect to y from minus 1 to 2. So that's going to be y squared z squared over 4. Evaluate the endpoints, and then we have to do the calculation. So we are plugging in the numbers. And you should follow this calculation, because I'm going to expect you to do these things and give me numerical answers. Getting this with the simplification, so this is now a function of z only. It is 3z squared over 4. We're going to get integrate this from 0 to 3. And we get 27 over 4. Okay, now we're going to define the triple integral over a more general bounded region E in three-dimensional space. This is a solid, by much the same procedure that we used for double integrals. We're going to enclose E in a box B of the type that we gave already. Then we define a capital F function so that it agrees with a lowercase f on E but is zero outside of that. And so this integral is going to be the integral over that box. Now this integral exists, and if the boundaries of uh, E are uh, reasonably smooth, and then this triple integral is going to have essentially the same properties as the double integrals. We're going to evaluate it in much the same way, except you have to be more careful in your uh, geometric renderings. And so uh, we restrict our attention to continuous functions f. So this f here, the lowercase f, is continuous in certain types of regions. So we're going to say a, a solid region E is of type 1. Now, a region E, a solid region of type 1, is different than a plane region of type 1. And so make sure you keep the terminology um, straight. But we say a solid region E is said to be of type 1 if it lies between the graphs of two continuous functions of x and y. That is, it's between... Um, u1 of x, y, and u2 of x, y. So this is type 1. And uh, here we're talking about x, y being in d. Well, d is the projection of e onto the x, y plane. So you see, here is e, and we project it on the x, y plane. So that is d. So that is what we're using for x and y. And then z is in between these two continuous functions. So by the same kind of reasoning that we led before for this special type region, the triple integral over E is the same thing as the double integral over D, and this is dA, this is the dx dy that we talked about before, but then f of x, y, and z uh, is being integrated, uh, and we're fixing, um, uh, you know, uh, the, these are fixed. The only variable here is, uh, is z, and z goes from the lower limit to the upper limit, which is going to give you just a function of x and y to do the double integral of. It makes a lot of sense, but it involves some calculation and some care. Uh, the meaning of the inner integral, I think I said all this before, is that x and y are held fixed, and these are regarded as constants. Uh, in particular, if a projection is of type 1, then E is going to look like this. So uh, X and Y, uh, let's see, so, uh, so if, uh, let's see, in particular, if the projection onto the XY plane is a, now here we're talking about something different. This is a type 1 plane region. That's why you had to do the double integrals first. Then E is this, so you see X is going between A and B, but Y is between these two values and z is between these. So this equation becomes this is the iterated integral. So here you're integrating first with respect to z, then with respect to y, and finally with respect to x. But when you integrate with respect to z, you get a function of x and y. Then you integrate with respect to y, you're going to get just a function of x, and finally you integrate with respect to x. Now, uh, we can have different situations, though, if, on the other hand, D is a type 2 plane region, and we're talking about type 2 plane region, that's what we studied before.
and that picture um, you know looks like this and you see that um, it, it is different because we have the functions differently uh, then e is this y is the one that runs between constants and then x is a uh, function of y and z is a function of those two so the equation will become this now this is one where we're integrating with respect to uh, z first but the next one we're going to do is with respect to x these are functions of h and then with respect to this so here is a picture of those type regions and you're projecting onto d Let's ask you to uh, do a problem here. So evaluate the triple integral over the region, uh, the solid region E, and this is just going to be Z dV. And E is the solid tetrahedron bounded by the four planes. X equals zero is a plane, Y equals zero is a plane, Z equals zero is a plane, and the final uh, fourth plane is X plus Y plus Z is equal to one. Graphicness is the first step. You know what to do. Let's see how you did. Okay, so uh, what we're doing is we're setting up this, uh, the triple integral, and it's wise to draw two diagrams, one of the solid E and one of its projection D. Now, the lower boundary of the tetrahedron in the plane X, uh, is the plane Z equals zero, and the upper boundary is uh, this plane uh, X plus Y plus Z is equal to one, or if you solve for Z, which actually makes sense, the upper limit is going to be 1 minus x minus y. I just solved this for z. And so we're going to use u1 of x uh, y is uh, u1 of x y is equal to 0, and u2 is equal to the top limit. Now notice that the planes intersect in the line x plus y is equal to 1. Now that means that is the projection that you have down here. This is x plus y is equal to 1 is that line in the xy plane. So the projection of E is the triangular region shown down here. So we're going to use that. But for now we have that E then is going to be this region. And again, verify this for yourself, but this is a set of x, y, z such that x is between 0 and 1, y is between uh, 0 and 1 minus x. You see this has to be a function of that. And then z is as before, 0 less or equal to uh, z is uh, less than or equal to 1 minus x minus y. And now we are going to have to do an uh, iterated integral. And so in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to fix the x. And if you fix the uh, x, you draw a line like this, and so y is going to go from 0 to 1 minus x. I know we've already talked about that. Okay, so now this triple integral that we are to evaluate, the triple integral of E, this is z dv, is going to be equal to this iterated integral, as we said, of z. We integrate first with respect to z, and we get this is z squared over 2. I evaluate at the endpoints. I plug in the numbers, and I do the calculation, I get this. Now this is a function then of x and y. I integrate this with respect to y. These are the limits of integration. The 1 half uh, sits out here and dx is still over here, it's held constant. But now I integrate this and I get uh, 1 minus x minus y whole cubed over 3 with a negative and I evaluate it at the endpoints. And again, you want to do um, this algebra, but it simplifies nicely in this case. The 3 comes out, that becomes 1 over 6. This is now just a function of x. And now we integrate this. With respect to x, we get this. We evaluate the endpoints, and we get 1 over 24. Make sure you can do these kind of calculations, because these are the kind of calculations I'm going to ask you to do. Now, uh, we are talking more about the solid regions of, is of type 2. If it's of this form, and that means xy still is in a projection, uh, but this projection is xz, not x, uh, xy, I'm sorry. This is yz. And so that is the projection that we're going to be entering, uh, doing. And so those two variables are controlled that way. 
but X is between these two. Now don't worry about memorizing what is type 1, type 2, and so on and so forth, but do know how you're going to do it because you're going to do the same kind of iteration. We're going to be integrating over D, and it's going to be this area of D that's a two-dimensional integral. This is DA, but here we're integrating first with respect to X. And a type 3 is um, the one where we have the projection of the solid goes into the xz uh, plane. So that's where we're going to be doing the, uh, uh, the integration. And y is between these two continuous functions. So then the iterated integral can become this. And a lot of times you're going to have to choose which way to go to come up with, uh, with these limits of integration. But here you're integrating over the DA where that is a um, domain that is in a two-dimensional domain that's in the XZ plane. That's the projection. And here you're integrating with respect to Y. And Y is going from uh, the boundaries, which are the continuous functions. So you have multiple ways to do this, and uh, these limits are something that uh, is a skill that you want to cultivate managing. Okay, so let's evaluate then the triple integral of uh, over solid region E, and this is the square root of x squared plus z squared. By the way, that motivates that you might be wanting to think about polar coordinates eventually when you get to that, but you're doing dv. And E is the region bounded by the paraboloid. Y is equal to x squared plus z squared and the plane y equal 4. Your first step is going to be to sketch this graph. You know what to do. Let's see how you did. Okay, so uh, the solid is shown in this uh, figure, and so that's the paraboloid. And you can actually now kind of see which way might make uh, the most sense uh, to do it. Now, this is a type 1 region, so we're going to consider the projection onto the xy plane. And if we project this down into the xy plane, uh, what will happen is you will get y is equal to x squared running from, uh, this is the region you will get when you when you project that, um, that down. Okay, so that means that the, um, the what we have then is uh, that uh, x runs from minus 2 to 2, and y, now that is for fixed x, so y for fixed uh, x, so if I fix x, I run from x squared, to 4. And then z, uh, I solve this equation uh, here for z, the, the equation of the, um, uh, oh, the, 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 the surface. So z is going to run from uh, minus the square root of uh, this to plus the square root of this. And again, you get that from uh, the square root of minus the square root of y minus x squared and plus the square root of y minus x squared. So we get that this triple integral, which we're to evaluate, is going to be this iterated integral, where we're going to be doing dz first, then dy, and finally dx using these bounds. Now, although this expression is correct, it's very difficult to evaluate this, uh, this integral. So we're going to change things around. And instead of doing it in this order, we're going to do it in a uh, different order, and we're going to do dy first. Now, if we're doing dy first, that means I project this three-dimensional object into the xz plane, and this is what you get. And this is a very uh, tame region uh, to do this. And the left boundary of E is the paraboloid. Y equals X squared plus Z squared. And the right boundary is going to be um, Y equal 4, because, again, we're projecting this into the X, Z. And then we're going to be able to take the um, functions being uh, the uh, bottom function is going to be uh, x squared plus z squared, and the top one is going to be 4. We get that from our uh, general equation. So this integral becomes this integral. Again, we're integrating with respect to y first. 
and we make those uh, those changes and then this is going to be this integral here so when we integrate this with respect to um, y and those are the limits uh, this is what you uh, this is what you get and you should verify that uh, that calculation but it is a simple calculation because this is uh, uh, pretty much a, uh, a constant and that is a typo that should be x squared plus z squared so correct that in your, uh, in your notes da so now this integral could be written uh, this way uh, as we go but again we said oh that was really nasty doing that so it turns out that if you look at this integrand and you see that you have x squared plus uh, z squared x uh, and uh, x squared plus uh, z squared here that polar coordinates would help you so we're going to let x equal r cosine theta and z equal r sine theta so if we make that change of variables then uh, what will happen is uh, now remember that x squared plus z squared is r squared x squared plus z squared is r squared uh, so we get um, this r we get 4 minus r squared we get the square root of r squared which is just r and then remember that when we uh, change variables here we end up with uh, for polar coordinates we have the da becomes r dr d theta so this then is the integral that we have and now r is going from uh, uh, 0 to 2 and theta is going from 0 to 2 pi and notice that there is only r's here so I actually could do that uh, in an integrated uh, integral this way and do the calculation you should verify this but I get 125 pi over actually that's 128 excuse me 128 pi over 15 now you might say this is kind of um, involved and I will tell you it is this takes some practice so please practice these problems um, and in fact let's do one more example take this uh, iterated integral and this is just going to be a general f of x y z but you have to deal with this integral and what I'm asking you to do is rewrite it as an iterated integral in a different order integrating first with respect to x then z then y now that means you have to uh, play around with this uh, uh, geometry it is not a calculation problem per se but you are working with this uh, geometry you know what to do let's see how you did okay so um, we uh, we want to um, uh, look at uh, at the boundaries that we have and so you see these projections we can have d1 d2 and d3 so we can be projecting into the uh, x y plane we can be projecting it into the uh, y z plane and we can be projecting into the x z plane you should verify that these are the ones that you that you get okay so uh, then these are the the, the projections now um, the solid is enclosed by uh, this plane and the parabolic cylinder y equal x squared and again you want to piece these together and come up with this three-dimensional drawing that looks like this all of these things enable you to determine the limits so first we're integrating with respect to x and uh, this is uh, the description that we want to want to use because you see we're integrating with respect to x first so we have x running from and so uh, uh, x is going to run from the uh, so here is uh, we're fixing y and z but we're fixing um, let's see here's the order that we're doing it so first we're fixing um, uh, z and y uh, but next we're going to do z so you see we're going to um, uh, X is going to go from uh, the square root of Y here we go X is going from the square root of, uh, of, of Y to 1 those are the values that we uh, get and then Z is going to go between 0 and um, Y and uh, so we uh, we have those two things we will substitute them in 
and those were the values that we uh, that we get. Okay, uh, now more than ever, time is precious. Each day must count. Do the math; it will make you strong. And now more than ever, take care of yourself and of each other. We're all in this together. May God bless you all.